from Kern Government Television. Welcome to this week's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting. Originating from the County Administrative Center, located at 1115 Truxton Avenue in Bakersfield, California. Grounded in ideas, energy, and innovation, Kern County's vision is to be a driving force for the world's fifth largest economy. And our mission is to exceed expectations of the communities we serve, changing the way they feel about government, those who manage it, and the services it provides. Today's Kern County Board of Supervisors meeting will convene momentarily. Board to reconvene. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Supervisor Peters. Here. Supervisor Scribner. Here. Supervisor Maggard. Here. Supervisor Couch. Here. Supervisor Perez. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the Tuesday, November 8th, 2022, 2 p.m. meeting of the Board of Supervisors. We will first hear from County Council Margo Rezon for a report on <laughs> actions taken in closed session. Ms. Rezon. Good afternoon, Chairman Scrivener, members of the board. This morning in closed session, you met on items number 59 through 63, and there is no reportable action. Thank you. We will begin by considering the consent agenda. Agendas are located on the tables near the doors for anyone wishing to follow along. All items listed with a CA or C above the item are considered to be routine and non-controversial by county staff. The CA represents the consent agenda for the Board of Supervisors. The C represents the consent agenda for the current sanitation authority. Consent items will be considered first and may be approved by one motion. If a member of the audience wishes to comment or ask questions regarding an item on the consent agenda, they may do so prior to a vote being taken. A member of the board may remove any item from the consent agenda and it will be considered in listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the board concerning the item before action is taken. So at this time, I will read the consent agenda item numbers for the Board of Supervisors agenda. So starting on page three of our agenda, we have items six through nine on consent. On page four, all items 10 through 12 are on consent. Page five, all items 13 through 17 are on consent. Page six, all items 18 through 25 are on consent. On page 20, sorry, page seven, all items 26 through 32 are on consent. And Madam Clerk, do I have a note to read in for 28? It says replace packet in Granicus, or is that, is that a note that you? No, Mr. Chairman, okay. you don't need to read that into the record. Thank you. We hadn't gone over that, so I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. All right, scratch that. Page eight, item 33 is on consent, along with 35 through 39 are on consent. On page nine, all items 40 through 46 are on consent. And finally, on page 10, all items 47 through 54 are on consent. Does, so do any members of our audience here today wish to make any comments or ask any questions on any of those consent agenda items that I read? Okay, seeing now, I'll return to the board for comments, questions, or a motion to approve the consent agenda and to adjourn as the Board of Supervisors and to reconvene as the current sanitation authority. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. Four ayes, one absent. Supervisor Perez. Thank you. We are now sitting as the current sanitation authority. We have two items on the agenda. We have items one and two. Do we have any members of the public that would like to make any comments on the Kern Sanitation Authority agenda? Okay, seeing none then, I'll return to the board and I'll ask if there's any questions or comments. Otherwise, a motion to approve the consent agenda for the Kern Sanitation Authority and to adjourn as the Kern Sanitation Authority and to reconvene as the Board of Supervisors. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. Four ayes, one absent. Supervisor Perez. Thank you. We're now sitting as the Kern County Board of Supervisors and we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is item number three, public presentations. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the board on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the board. Board members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information or request staff to report back to the board at a later meeting. So this time I'll ask if there's any persons that would like to make any comments 
done your public presentations. Please state your name and you have two minutes, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Ralph Robles. I am a veteran. I'm here today to ask you, where is your sense of outrage? At least one would-be poll worker complained that his training start was slow walked. I am hearing that a voter with a, uh, uh, showed up to a polling place and it was closed and uh, she was not directed to uh, the uh, proximate uh, uh, correct uh, polling place. And uh, another uh, voter was not required to turn in his mail-out ballot when he showed up to the polling site to vote. A voter with a faulty ballot was told to turn it in anyway. A voter complained that the polling, oh, correction, I already went into that. Uh, I am hearing that your poll watchers are denied reasonable proximity to uh, ballot uh, processing uh, processes that are mandated by the state. Another question I have is, are you going to publish the number of ballots that are adjudicated? In a report released by Michigan Circuit Court Judge Kevin Eisenberger, uh, Eisenheimer, it was stated that the Dominion voting system is intentionally and purposefully designed with inherent errors to create a system of fraud and influence election results. The system intentionally generates an enormously high number of errors. The ballots are then transferred for adjudication where uh, these intentional errors, errors will uh, be uh, uh, changed with no oversight. Again, I ask, are you going to publish the number of uh, ballots adjudicated? And I uh, quote from that report again. We Mr. conclude. Your time has expired. You can leave your comments up. Yes, gentlemen. How many people have to die fighting for this country before you'll give them the government they deserve? Thank you, sir. Do we have another speaker, please? Good afternoon. Hi, uh, Paul Infesti, uh, Area 3, Mike Maggard's district. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say that, you know, today is election day, and I wish, uh, since this is her last election, that Mary Bedard have an uneventful and peaceful uh, transition and voting uh, deal. I have full confidence in the system here. I've heard about it over and over again, and I'm really proud, and I know that as Kern County citizens, we might have some uh, partisan values at election time, but we can all go back and be friends the next day after the election. That's what I'm looking forward to. So anyway, we can show the country that Kern County residents were different. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Do we have any other speakers today? Okay, I'm seeing none then. We'll move on to board member announcements or reports. Anything from the board? Very well, then we'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which is an item under planning and natural resources. This is item number five, and this is a request of John Dorsum to vacate all public access for portions of assessor parcel numbers 054-020-13 and 054-020-61, exempting a 15-foot wide strip located on the northern parcel boundaries located approximately one half mile west of Rio de Loma Road in the Kernville area. And I'll now turn to our planning department to um, begin this item. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Murphy. Chairman, members of the board. So your board did receive an addendum staff report for this item. Um, subsequent to the distribution of the original report, Mr. Dorsum, our project applicant, contacted staff and requested that this vacation uh, be withdrawn for consideration at this time. Um, if you no doubt looked at the uh, original staff report that was prepared, there are some concerns from the surrounding residents and uh, members of the community that um, utilize that area for recreational purposes. And they have a concern that if this vacation were to be granted, that that would uh, eliminate some recreational opportunities in the area. Uh, in conversations with Mr. Dorsum, um, he indicated that he had recently been in contact with the uh, Forest Service and uh, indicated that he'd be willing to work with the service to implement an alternative trail to Bull Run Creek 
should the Forest Service acquire property that is located just north of this requested vacation. While this alternative trail would primarily be on property owned by the Forest Service, there could be limited portions of this route that would need to traverse Mr. Dorsum's property, and Mr. Dorsum has indicated that he is willing to work with the Forest Service to, to authorize and allow that. So based on that request, the proposed vacation is being withdrawn for consideration by your board at this time, and your board should not accept any public testimony as there is no action for you to consider today. If at a future date, an alternative trail to Bull Run Creek Pools it has been established by the Forest Service, Mr. Dorsum would be interested in revisiting this proposed vacation request and this item may come forward before your consideration at some time in the future. So with that, that completes staff's presentation and the uh, recommendation is to have this project withdrawn by applicants and no action for your board. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Any questions from the board? Okay, seeing none, uh, yeah, the staff indicated we won't take any public testimony on this item. So we'll move on then to item number 34. This is an item under County Administrative Office and um, General Services Division. And so I'm gonna turn to Mr. Alsop on this item and he can start us off and let us know if there's another member of the staff that may be taking this item on. Mr. Alsop, yeah, good I, afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna ask um, Mr. Zervis uh, to handle this item. Good afternoon, Mr. Zervis. Thank you, Honorable uh, Chairman and members of the Board of Supervisors. Uh, last October, your board received a report from staff on a strategic action plan to reduce homelessness and mitigate its impacts on public safety and quality of life. Most of the specific action items were funded using $15 million from the American Rescue Plan Act, which your board allocated for this purpose. As part of that plan, the county, in partnership with Community Action Partnership of Kern, or CAPK, recently successfully launched the safe camping and parking site at the M Street Navigation Center, which filled up quickly, continually housing roughly 50 individuals who would have otherwise been sleeping on our streets and establishing a pathway for these people into navigation centers or directly into permanent housing. This unique and innovative project is proving successful in diversifying and expanding our ability to provide shelter to the homeless. Over, this, over the past year, we have been diligently working on another component of this plan, which will expand our capacity to house the homeless and diversify our tool set to reach a more challenging homeless population, ones that cannot or will not enter into traditional shelter facilities. This project staff is affectionately titled Tinny Oaks. The project before you today is a non-congregate supportive services project, including 50 separate individual sleeping quarters, six restrooms and shower facilities, two laundry rooms, two community buildings, one security building, and two administrative buildings from which full wraparound services will be provided. All of the buildings are either prefabricated or modular to save costs and shorten construction time. I'd like to call your attention to your screens. We've prepared a site plan to give your board an idea of what this project would look like. So the small units uh, forming the shape of, a, of an L uh, and, a, and a backwards L there, uh, those are the individual sleeping units. Uh, they're roughly eight by eight square feet. Uh, and then in the center, we have some green space and the um, administrative or the community buildings are on, on each uh, end, the west and east sides of the project uh, and administrative buildings up at the top along with restroom and shower facilities. <clears throat> The units themselves are, are from a company called Pallet Structures, from which your board has already approved the acquisition. Uh, they look like this. There's, they're equipped with two beds, although they are intended uh, to, to hold one individual um, a, as well as their belongings. Um, although in some jurisdictions, uh, there have been couples placed uh, in some of these facilities. This is like, I have a couple pictures of what similar projects look like throughout California. Um, here's, here's one that Pallet provided. Uh, here are a couple others. Uh, the colorful pictures uh, on the left-hand side uh, are from projects in the Los Angeles area, uh, similar design to what we're talking about here. Um, and, and then uh, another example on the right-hand side to give you an idea of what these uh, facilities typically look like. And then again, our, our site plan here is designed uh, for our needs is, uh, is on your screen currently. <coughs> 
This facility design, is designed to meet specific needs of a more challenging homeless population whom for a variety of reasons are not suitable for communal sleeping settings in our existing shelters, such as the M Street Navigation Center. However, this facility will provide all of the same security, support, and wraparound services that are provided at M Street, aimed to help residents take down barriers and equip them to transition into a stable and long-term living situation. Once constructed, this facility will add another unique component to the county's tool set in addressing homelessness alongside our traditional communal homeless shelters safe camping and parking options, and other alternatives offered by our nonprofit providers. This project is a close collaboration between the County Administrative Office and Kern County Behavioral Health and Recovery Services, and in consultation with the broader Homeless Service Provider Network. We are not reinventing the wheel with this project. Many of these projects, <clears throat> many of these types of projects have been constructed over the past few years, not just in California, but in a number of states across the county. Um, or across the country. In fact, Pallet, just, just Pallet alone, has about 63 of these types of facilities uh, located across several different states and several in, in California. Uh, over a year ago, staff from BHRS and the CAO visited two very similar facilities in the Los Angeles area, at which point it became clear that this type of project fits a need in Kern County which is currently unmet. The project is located on county-owned land at the corner of Hart Street and East Roberts Lane in Oildale. This project has been fully designed and permitted. Your board has already authorized the purchase of the sleeping quarters and related structures from pallet structures. So the item before you today is to approve the project plans and specifications and to authorize general services to proceed with the public bidding procedures. If approved today, once bids are received, we'll return to your board with a recommendation to award a construction contract and proceed with project construction. Currently, we expect the project to be completed in roughly one year. During the construction period, we will be issuing an RFP for service providers to operate this facility under contract with the county. Both the construction and operations through December 31st, 2026 would be funded with Federal American Rescue Plan Act funding with no general fund impact. Therefore, it's recommended that your board take the following actions today. And I, I would like to point out that the action is slightly modified from what's in your original board letter uh, as far as the date from which uh, bids will be opened. So the recommendation for action for your board today is as follows. First, approve the plans and specifications. Second, authorize the chairman to sign the plans. And third, authorize general services to publish a notice to contractor in a newspaper of general circulation pursuant to public contract code section 20125. The bid opening date is to be Tuesday, December 13th, 2022 at 11 a.m. at the General Services Division located at 1115 Truxton Avenue, third floor, Bakersfield, California, 93301. Um, and that concludes my prepared remarks. I'd be happy to answer any questions from the board or the public. I'd also like to point out, Mr. Chairman, we, we have a few of our uh, homeless service uh, partners here in the audience that may want to make some comments regarding the project as well. Thank you, Mr. Zervis. At this time, I will open it up to public comment. Do we have any members of the audience who would like to make any comment on this item, please? Uh, hello, my name is Marvin Luna. I am with the Open Door Network. I'm speaking on behalf of Lauren Skidmore. She apologizes for not being able to be here today. But uh, housing is extremely scarce for everyone here in Kern County, and more so for our homeless individuals. The length of stay at our communal shelter has increased drastically, and oftentimes that communal situation does not work for everyone involved. So we are um, supporting the endeavor to build this village here. <clears throat> individuals living on the street cost us nearly $40,000 every year, and Kern County has constantly pushed forward the housing first model. So again, we just support that and are hoping that that takes place. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Wheeler, Flood Ministries. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and, and Board of Supervisors. I'm here to support the project. 
uh, as uh, Flood Ministries is the primary referring agency and street outreach agency providing services to people experiencing homelessness in Kern County. We cover all 8,200 square miles. And so I just want to say I, I applaud Mr. Alsop, Mr. Zervis, um, Amanda for uh, their work on, on bringing this project forward. It's something that we need. It fills a gap. Our, our shelters are full every, every day. Uh, you know, when we were talking about building the M Street Navigation Center and even the Brundage Lane Navigation Center, people said, oh, nobody will come. But guess what? We have a waiting list. We have about 100 people on our waiting list every day that wants to go to the shelter. And I'm confident um, that at, just as we fill, um, immediately filled up the, the safe camping, we'll be able to fill up this project and it will be able to help, especially with those people who won't go to um, the congregate shelter. Uh, and so I very much support this project and I'm looking forward to um, seeing us make a difference to this project. Thank you, Mr. Wheeler. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, Anna Lavin. I'm the executive director of the Bakersfield Kern Regional Homeless Collaborative and very much applaud um, that the CAO's office has brought forward this project. I think you've heard me speak before about the need to have many options, um, have a robust toolkit to address homelessness. It's not one size fits all. And uh, I really think that this particular project will help us fill a, a very particular need. Uh, we know that there are a variety of folks for, for a variety of reasons, um, that they, they should not or cannot be in a congregate sheltering environment. And um, in those cases, uh, right now, we don't have a whole lot of other options or alternatives for them um, to get them off the streets, to help them get uh, opportunities for recovery, opportunities to focus on their health, their well being, uh, and um, really stabilize them. Um, and this kind of project is exactly the kind of thing that we need for those who I think for many community members often see folks who are particularly disruptive. Uh, and what we know is that uh, particularly our, some of our most recent projects um, really have done so much good. Uh, I know that there's been citing of, of some of those projects already, but the safe camping, um, we really see extraordinary results. Um, the sheltering of youth in um, scattered site sheltering, uh, and I know you, some of you heard that this morning from some of our uh, youth, um, can, is incredibly successful. And so my anticipation is that not only will you be able to see um, a net good for the community, uh, we know that, of course, providers can be extraordinarily good stewards uh, and really help to improve locations and neighborhoods, but we also know that we can really transform some of the, the lives of the folks who are anticipated to go into these um, temporary housing units. Uh, and when we're able to do that, we can ultimately find and realize a Kern County where everyone has a permanent place to call home. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good afternoon, Chair and fellow board members. Jeremy Tobias, CEO of Community Action Partnership of Kern, operator of the M Street Navigation Center. Um, I, I'm here to support the, pr the project. Um, we think it's fantastic. This is a very, as you know, very complex situation with the homeless situation in California, and it's gonna take a portfolio of an array of projects. This adds to that portfolio, and I think uh, we'll fill a gap. Uh, we urge you to approve this project. We fully support it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers on this item? Okay, seeing none then, I'll return to the board for questions, comments, or a motion on staff's recommendation. We'll make a motion to approve staff's recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes. The motion is approved. Four ayes, one absent. Supervisor Perez. Thank you. That brings us to the conclusion of our agenda. And, and having no additional items to consider, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn to Tuesday, November 29th at 9 a.m. We are adjourned. Thank you.
Space and Goddard Space Flight Center, and we're responsible for navigating the spacecraft. Um, during the approach phase, so we'll take those images, we'll process 